put on a tree and the horse left him and ran away and Absalom was dangling on the tree caused to be any man that hung on the tree that was how he died Joab came back and put a, a spear in his belly and killed him there that is what happens to people who just rise up against their fathers I mean true fathers not illegitimate fathers I mean true fathers so Jesus was even ordained Jesus even though he's God yet he showed to us how a, a, a new minister must hand over baton or, or take over baton from an older minister John the Baptist was on the scene before Christ came Christ did not ignore John the Baptist just forget about him because John was not doing any miracle so John don't know the message and then Jesus did the miracle Jesus knows the message just forget about John take some people and face the other side no two of them met in River Jordan Amen. They met the river Jordan. And they whispered, they whispered something small. They whispered something. They had a minister's meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. They had a small minister's meeting while others were waiting. John said, but you are supposed to baptize me. You are greater than me. This and that and the other. Jesus said, yes, I know. But let it be so now. Let us fulfill the scripture. That's the way it is written, that you will baptize me. Then watch out for the Holy Ghost. I think you remember. Oh yes, okay. Okay, sorry. Let it be so. <laughs> Amen. People were wondering, what are they talking? Ah, John, do this thing quick and do us now. But they didn't know who and who were talking. See? The master and his messenger. But tell me, who bowed? Who bowed before who? The master bowed before his messenger. Why? He was on the scene before him. Jesus bowed. And John pushed him inside the water and raised him up. God Almighty. Humbling himself before a man born of a woman. And you cannot humble yourself before a man that is in the field before you. A man goes to a virgin land and starts a job. And you go and see what God has done with him. You have no respect for it. Because he did not preach the seven seal in the seven days. You scatter everything and go away. You will hang like Absalom. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be mocked. No. Check everybody in the Bible that went out of the way and did not go according to Bible pattern. See their end. Korah, Detam, Abraham, they said, Moses, it's too much upon you. All of us are holy. We are all ministers. This and that. Ground open, swallowed them and closed. And the march continued. They took the honor upon themselves. And so on and so forth. The Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, the Word made flesh, humbled himself before a man to baptize him. And when that was done, John said, my job is over. I will decrease and he will decrease. Power has changed hands. And John went away in peace. And the Lord moved on in his ministry. But there was a link between the two. There's always a link. There was a link between Moses and Aaron. A link between Moses and Joshua. A link between Elisha, Elijah and Elisha. A link between John and Jesus. And so on and so forth. Your own is linked between you and who? He just raised up and gone. How about brother? Check the Bible. It's not so. That's not how ministers are made. There must be somebody around somewhere who brought you the world and raised you up. That is the person that will present you, hand over the baton of the ministry to you. You may have been a minister before, ordained in the church, fine. Just be sure that your own ministry, or you being a minister, was made the Bible way. Not just you raised up on your own. Okay, let me just bring down this thing and then we shall go for today and tomorrow we can finish it up. Let's go down to the book of Acts. We have just two scriptures here and then we shall close for today. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. We read about the story of Paul. Was Paul ordained? Look at verse... Uh, look at verse... Uh, verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they laid him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight. And neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, 
Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy sins at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou comest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with, that, with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it were, as had been scales. And he received sight, fought with and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you read verse 20, you see that from then, Paul began to preach Jesus as Son of God. That's what Paul preached. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. If you preach that today, they say you don't know the message. <laughs> Abby? They say you are too shallow. You know, preach deep, deep things. What is deeper than Jesus? What is higher than Jesus? What is wider than Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. The whole message is Jesus Christ revealed. So Paul was called by Christ, converted by Christ. Yet, he subjected him to be ordained because that's a Bible pattern. He didn't just say, well, Saul of Tarsus, I called you. And two of your uh, servants are witnesses that I called you from heaven. You can go and preach now. No! It must fit into the Bible pattern. You may not just be a pastor. You may be another minister that may ordain you. But your pastor has to be a part of it. Your pastor has to be there. Paul was coming from Jerusalem. That's where the apostles were. God would have sent him back to Jerusalem for Peter them to ordain him. But he told him to go on to Damascus. God gave a vision to Ananias of Paul. And gave Paul a vision of Ananias. And when they met, there was no problem. Ananias prayed for Paul. His eyes came open. Teach him the word. Baptize him. Then he received the Holy Ghost. Then he went and preached that Jesus is the Son of God. What a message. A man that saw Christ. Look at what he preached. You that have never even seen him in a dream. Seven thunder, jam, seven, eight, rainbow, and lightning flash over the, the other one. And the 70 weeks of Daniel, jam, um, and the, the congregation don't know what you're talking. Because you want to sound big, you want to sound deep. None of the message of the hours is deep and confusing. It's, it's sweet and simple. It's people that cut this and cut this and cut this and join it where the prophet did not mean to join it. Then we don't know what they're presenting. A man that saw God ordained by the Holy free with the Holy Ghost. Look at what he preached. Went into the synagogue and preached that Jesus is the Son of God. That's all he preached. That was simple enough. Let's finish by reading the book of Acts chapter 13. Verse 1 to 5. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaim which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they, mani as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Watch what happened. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Praise God. For this special ministry, they still had to be ordained to that. Separate from me, Paul and Barnabas. The fact that Paul has been ordained before is of no consequence. This is a new calling. This is a new ministry. See? And it was not just revealed to Paul. And to, and to Barnabas only. It was revealed to the prophets and the elders in that church. 
in, in, in uh, uh, I think it was in Antioch, in Antioch, where they were fasting and fellowshipping and worshiping the Lord, God revealed to them. And Paul humbled himself. Paul, who has seen God, humbled himself. Barnabas came and knelt down. Barnabas was one of the richest of all the Christians. Sold all the land and everything. He came and knelt down. And those elders came and put their hands on them and prayed for them. Commit them to God for the special assignment. And then send them off. So that after they go, they can come back. But nowadays, what do we see? People just break away and they don't come back. Just speak evil and evil and evil on end. Nothing like reconciliation. Nothing like peace. Nothing like forgiveness. Nothing like, let's go and cross-check what we had. Whether it is true or it's not true. No. They just keep going wrong, wrong, wrong to the end. The making of a minister. Bible pattern. God selects from among men those he knows can have compassion, can bear with the wrong, can bear with those that are out of the way. But they have to go through the ordination pattern of the Bible. Because ordination makes the new church part of the former church. Amen. Amen. And he gives the former uh, pastor the, the, the responsibility to oversee the young church. Watch it to grow. Help them in every way you can so that they can grow and find their feet. But if you just go away on your own, then you put responsibility on nobody. And that's not God's way. See? No new baby. No new baby takes care of, its, of, of itself. An adult takes care of every new baby. So also is the church. Every young church needs an older church to oversee it and help it to find its feet and not go astray. It is not the will of God for people to become ministers by themselves, make themselves ministers. It's not the will of God for churches to break and scatter. We have had enough of that. We should do everything possible not to allow it go on anymore. The coming of the Lord is nearer now than when we first believed. We want the Lord to return and meet us in peace. Amen. Amen. Not beating one another, but encouraging one another as we behold that day coming near. Let us pray. Jesus, of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the name. Oh, Jesus is the name. Oh, Jesus is the name of the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify the name. Oh, magnify the name. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify the name. Oh, magnify the name. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord. Let us think. Let us think. Let us meditate deep in our hearts. Have we made mistakes in this direction? Have we come up to be ministers God's pattern? Or have we gone the shortcut? Let us pray that God will show us where we are wrong. We don't want to worship in vain. We don't want to minister in vain. Let us pray that the Lord will reveal to us what should be made right. We want to make it right. Let us pray. Have we supported such a thing? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor and praise. From everlasting to everlasting, oh Lord. You are our God. We give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing. Because the ministration that we minister is what anoints the people. If the minister is right, he will anoint the people with the Spirit of God. Like one of the ministers said this afternoon in the minister's meeting. When a minister speaks hate and evil and sows discord, it defies the people. It defies you. But you may not know it. That you are being defiled. And nothing defiled shall enter the kingdom of God. Nothing defiled. You are commanded by the scripture not to speak evil of anybody. Anybody at all. No matter what, leave that to God. What we owe one another is love. 
And love has something to do. Love forgives. Love endures. Love believes all things. Forgives all things. Endures all things. If the ministration that you hear and the ministration you sit under is not training you, then it is spoiling you. Colossians 2.8 is spoiling you. She is not teaching you after Christ. It's spoiling you. And nothing spoiled shall enter heaven. You have a right to go to where you can hear the word of God that will dress you up with the message of the hour. Don't put the Bible in your hand like Elisha. But Abraham say Elijah and Elisha is like Christ and the church. Elijah did some miracles. Elisha did more. Jesus did some miracles. But he says more. That the church will do more. We must dress up with the garments of righteousness which Jesus has given to us. We must hold in our two hands the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And then we can say where is the God of this Bible. So if the ministration you sit under and you minister, if you are teaching the people to hate other people, you are defiling them, you are destroying them, you are not training them, you are not getting them ready for the coming of the Lord. You will be responsible because you have no compassion or you have no, you don't bear with those that are wrong. Let us pray now that God will reveal to us what we are really doing when we are preaching, when we are ministering to the people. We are anointing them with the spirit that is inside us. If you have the spirit of God, you will anoint the people with the spirit of God. If you have the spirit of the world, you will anoint the people with the spirit of the world. You see your church dressing like the world, women dressing like the world, men dressing like the world. If you have the spirit of the devil, the same thing. Let us pray that God will give us his Holy Ghost, his own spirit. So that when we stand and minister, we anoint the people with the word of God. And fill them with the spirit of God. Getting them ready for the coming of the Lord. Like Elisha, that the church may have a double portion of what we have. Let us pray. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people. For his blood has washed away my sins. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the life behind the word, the life behind the word, the anointing of the spirit. You are anointing the people. When you are preaching to them, you are anointing them. The word you speak is either the word of God or your own word or the word of the devil. Let us pray that God will anoint us so that we can give the church a double portion, a double portion, a double portion of our anointing. The anointing, the anointing. Very important. What anointing? What anointing that we are putting on the people? What is anointing? It is anointing that we put on the people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. One more time, unto the Lord with all your heart. Of the living God, oh, fall afresh on me. Oh, Spirit of the living God, oh, fall afresh on me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. I'm me again. I'm free me again. I'm with me. Oh, Holy of the living God, fall afresh on me. This is for the ministers and for all of us. The Bible says we must not be like the Gentiles who make their, themselves masters over the people. The word minister means servant. You have to be able to balance your calling servant of God and as you serve the people you serve God some of us have become masters of the people able to call some devil call some witches call some wizard accuse some of this and accuse them make life absolutely impossible and miserable for people to worship in our assemblies practically literally force them out and don't care a brother said I went to a place and preached and everybody left the church 
and he thought he had done a great thing. A preacher preached everybody out of the church and he thought he had done a great thing. That's what some pastors are doing. Frustrate some people out of the church. You shouldn't do that. We are servants of God. We are shepherds. We have to present our talents and our gifts back to the one who gave us. And also present the profit that we have made with the gift that he gave us. Let us not be that one that buried his talent and was tied leg and hand and thrown into outer darkness. But let us be like those ones that the master said, well done, faithful servant. I give you more cities to rule. Because they made profit with their talent. Let us pray that God will give us wisdom. How to rule the church of God in love. Fair. And yet firm. A priest should be one that can have compassion on him that is wrong. Bear with the one that is out of the way. Not a legalistic minded person. Making laws and rules. Making himself master of everybody. God is master. We have only one master. And that is God. So we are going to pray again. That God will make us shepherds. Not judges. Not lawyers. We have an advocate already. We don't need another one. We have a judge that will judge heaven and earth already. We don't need another one. What God needs today is laborers. He said, look up. The field is ripe. But the laborers are few. We need laborers. May God give us wisdom. How to rule his church. How to win more souls. How to go out and preach sinners to become saints. Not to preach saints out of the church to become sinners. Let us pray once more. To win souls into the kingdom of God. To put the devil to shame. To glorify and exalt the name of our God. May we be fearless, 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 fearless. May we be fearless with the assignment given to us. To anoint the people with the Spirit of God. Heal those that need healing, no God. Deliver those that need deliverance. Save those that need salvation. May we find grace and mercy in thy sight. Gracious God, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. Here are your children, O God. Precious children, pro that you purchased with your precious blood. I rededicate everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us our mistakes, Lord. Those things that we have taken to be common, and yet the Bible takes it to be serious. Teach us, Lord, to take them serious. Those things that we have been very casual are doing, and the Bible says they are not casual. Teach us, Lord, to take correction. For your servants, Lord, who are here, may they really think deep about their calling, knowing that the one who called us is watching. The way we are walking in his very yard. Help everyone, O oh God. For without you, we can do nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things. Come among us, Lord. Come in our lives. Come into our ministries. And help us, O oh God. Any of your servant that is not properly ordained, lead him in the path of righteousness. That he may take correction. And normalize what should be normalized. And teach us, Lord, how to love one another. And that the love of God will bind us together. Not to be breaking like eggs that cannot be patched. But may we overcome this spirit of breakage. And love one another so much. So much. That we can overlook one another's mistakes. Teach us, O oh God. For you are the great teacher. What a priest chosen among men should be. And how he should come into office. Help us, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to our God.